and qanitat we mean the obedient women obedient to whom obviously by the order of preference obedient first of all to allah obedient then to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and last but not the least obedient qanitat obedient to her husband obviously within the limits of quran and hadith she stays obedient now to open our hearts and to make it very clear and to make us accept the importance of our duty of being obedient to the husband and to make us realize the rewards an obedient wife has been promised in quran and hadith i'm going to i'm going to quote quite a few hadith so that we get very clear headed about it and we also get tempted by the rewards promised by allah and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam Hazrat Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Nasa'i and Hazrat Abdullah bin Salam radiyallahu ta'ala anhu also reports in a Sahih hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said your best wives that is the best wives are what your best wives are those when you look at them you feel pleasure when you order them they obey you and they look after or they protect your honor your wealth and your secrets when you're not around so this is the quality and the duty of the best wife and i again repeat that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam clearly said that if i had to allow anybody to prostrate anyone other than allah i would have asked the women to prostrate in front of their husbands in a hadith reported by hazrat anas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in fact it is a huge promise it is a huge promise by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that if a woman offers now go on making your countdown and go on putting your scores If a woman offers the five daily prayers keeps the fasts of Ramadan got the score of 2 so far so good five daily prayers keep the fasts of Ramadan guards her honor and fourth obeys her husband then she can enter heaven by whatever door out of the eight doors of heaven she would desire that is a woman who does all these four things fasting offering salah and guiding her honor and obeying her husband she will have the super bumper offer that oh you muslim woman you can enter out of whichever door of the paradise you want to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us one of them then Hazrat Ummi Salma radiyallahu ta'ala anha reports in Tirmizi that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam promised and said that a wife who, who passes away in a state that her husband was pleased with her she will enter the paradise Rabbi ibni li 'indaka baytan fil jannah Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has in another hadith mentioned in some other words he said that you cannot enter paradise until allah is pleased and allah will be pleased if the husband is pleased so the player of allah is the player of the husband and the anger of the husband is the anger of allah i would want to clarify that for a version for an unmarried girl the first right after allah is of her father like we we heard in surah baqarah that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said raza allah bi raza al walid sukhtu allah bi sukhtu al walid so the first right is the right of the father but after that woman gets married after allah the first right is of her husband 
So if the husband is pleased, Allah is pleased. And if the husband is displeased and happy, Allah is displeased and unhappy. Similarly, Prophet ﷺ addressed all women and said, All of those who are desirous of entering the paradise should obey Allah. All of those who are desirous of entering the paradise should obey Allah. But you cannot obey Allah until you obey your husbands. To the extent that if the husband asks you or orders you to run between those two red mountains, she should do so. The Prophet ﷺ was, was sitting in an open ground and there were two red mountains and he pointed towards them and he said that if the husband says something which seems which seems so illogical and so irrational. But why must I run? Why should I run? Why do I have to run? But if the husband says, instructs and orders the wife to run between those two mountains and seems very irrational and illogical and unpractical and pointless and useless. But if the husband is ordering, there's not to question why, there's but to do and die. That is exactly how a wife is supposed to obey her husband. Obviously, obviously, if she can physically run between the two mountains, if she if she has an arthritis, if he has certain issues, obviously then she would not be expected to do so. And uh, then obedience to Allah, obedience to the husband is so very important that taking his permission to go out of the house, the Prophet Wasallam. In a Sahih hadith says that when a woman leaves her house without the consent or the permission of her husband, then an angel on the heaven curses her and all the things she passes by curse her till she returns back. So the curse of the angel and curse of all the lively things from which she passes or which she comes across, so the curse of it is making what? It is a major sin to leave your house without the permission or without the consult, a consent or the agreement of the husband. And I would want to clarify that women generally know, women generally know where her husband would allow us to go and we do not need to ask for his permission for every trivial issue and every small thing because we automatically understand that obviously he is not going to stop us from going to the market. He might not be stopping us to go to uh, fetch the child from the school or he might not be uh, stopping us from many things. But the wives clearly know and in hearts of hearts, we do know and realize that this is the place I'm not sure. I'm not clear that he might or he might not. But the moment when you are not sure and the, and the thing which you're not clear headed and in heart of heart, he know, you know that he won't be liking it. Then for that specific place or that specific situation or get together, you need to seek his permission. And on the contrary, and on the contrary, a woman who obeys the husband, just look at look at what she's going to get in the worldly, in the worldly life. The Prophet ﷺ promises that a wife who obeys and serves her husband, supplicating will be for her. That is, who will be supplicating for her? All the birds of the skies, the beasts in the jungle, the fish in the depths of the oceans, and the angels in the heaven as long as she is obeying and serving her husband. So this is the merit and this is the huge reward which is being promised to an obedient wife. The Prophet وسلم, in some other words said, the best women, Allah make us one of them, Allah make our daughters and daughters-in-laws and our granddaughters and the girls of our offsprings make us make all of them one of them. The best women amongst my followers are those who serve and obey their husbands in all matters except the disobedience of Allah and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Such a lady Prophet ﷺ promised, such a lady will be rewarded in one day and one night. The reward like a martyr in the path of Allah. Subhanallah. 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 
Then the Prophet ﷺ informed all the Muslim wives in a Sahih Hadith, A wife is the closest to Allah when she is serving, attending and obeying her husband. So there we are. And that is what we need to learn. And that is what we need to understand. And that is what we need to adopt. Then in another in other hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, he warned, he actually clearly warns three people whose salah will not raise beyond their heads, that is their salah will just not be accepted. It will not be raised towards the heaven to be presented before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it will not be raised be above their heads to be to be recorded in the illiyin. Three people whose salah will not be raised beyond their heads. Number one, the slave who escapes from his master until he returns. A person who is intoxicated until, that is, he drank and he was drunk until he regains his consciousness. And the third is a wife whose husband, a wife whose husband commanded her a righteous act and she refused and he's angry with her. So a wife with whom her husband is angry or annoyed due to a right cause until he makes up. So if the husband is annoyed, Allah is annoyed. If the husband is displeased, Allah is displeased. If husband is unhappy, Allah is unhappy. If we are disobedient to the husband, we are disobedient to Allah. And if we are obedient to the husband, we are obedient to Allah. And if, we, and if we pass off in this state of obedience and service to the husband, we shall, inshallah, according to the promises of Hadith, enter by whichever door of the paradise we would want. Allahumma ja'alna minhum.